Words to describe setting up K3S. This is hard. This is so difficult to set up. Isn't this overkill? What is the load balancer again? Why do I need two load balancers? Should I use etcd? So wait, I need two load balancers and keep alive D? What is metal LB again? Have you heard of Cubevip? Um, isn't that a single point of failure? <laughs> I know. I'll automate the whole thing. Today, we're not only going to set up K3S with etcd and an HA installation with Cubevip and metal LB, but we're also going to automate the whole entire thing so that we can't really mess this up. And so we're going to fully automate the installation of K3S so that it's 100% repeatable. And then we're going to tear it all down as if it never happened. But before we do, a huge thanks to our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs and hard drives to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. Micro Center is your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. And don't worry, if it's your first time building a PC, they have lots of helpful and eligible staff that are there to help you out and will point you in the right direction so that you don't attempt to apply thermal paste like this. Micro Center has been kind enough to give all new customers a free SSD and it's available in store only. So see the link in the description for details. So how did I get here? Well, as you may or may not know, I've been running K3S in my own environment for quite some time. And I even have a video on setting up K3S with MySQL. Now there's nothing wrong with the K3S version of MySQL. It runs great. But at the time, the etcd version wasn't available. And the etcd version is super interesting because it creates a high availability database on the nodes instead of hosting it outside of the cluster. And right around that time, I saw Jeff Galen create a video on Ansible. And that sent me down a rabbit hole of learning Ansible, creating a video on Ansible, and automating a lot of tasks. Well, you know how that goes. Anyway, so I found that GitHub repo, I cloned it and created some virtual machines. And then I tried to provision a high availability cluster, but there was just one problem. The Ansible playbook only supported spinning up one etcd node. And that meant only one server node, which is an HA. I mean, it's configured for HA, but I would have to manually add additional server nodes to make it HA, and that's no fun. So technically it wasn't HA out of the box. So I decided to dig around in the code and in the branches, and I found a fork where somebody actually fixed that issue. So I could actually create an HA cluster out of the box with Ansible. And I saw they also added support for QVIP. This was awesome because this is exactly what I was trying to do. I love open source. So a huge thank you to user 212850A. <laughs> this gave me a nice starting point to automate the rest. Again, huge thank you to the open source community, Jeff Gearling, and user 212850A. So after poking around for a little bit, I found that most of it was working, but it did need some updates and some configuration changes to work with the latest version of QVIP, along with some other features I wanted to add. So I decided to roll up my sleeves and start hacking away at this fork in my own branch. And before making it public, I wanted to accomplish a few things. I wanted to make sure that anyone using this could start with an unlimited amount of nodes. I wanted to make sure that QVIP was rock solid and then it would actually create a load balancer that you could use to make K3S fault tolerant. I also wanted to automate an external load balancer so that when you expose a service, you get an IP address for that service from your cluster. And then anyone can use that IP address to access services within K3S. So I had a few choices for this step. And a quick clarification for these two load balancers. The first load balancer you typically need in K3S is a load balancer for your Kubernetes API. This is the load balancer for control plane. And this should be fault tolerant so that if you issue K3S commands, you can still get a response back. And the other load balancer is a service load balancer or Kubernetes for you to expose services on. In most cloud environments, they supply a cloud load balancer for you to expose services on. And this service load balancer that I'm talking about is for non-cloud environments, in self-hosted environments. And since we don't have a cloud load balancer, 
to give us IPs to expose our services outside, we need to use something that can emulate a cloud load balancer that Kubernetes can ask for an IP address from so our services can be exposed. So I had choices to make for load balancers. Kubevip can actually do both. It can be a service load balancer or a load balancer for your control plane or your Kubernetes etcd nodes. This sounded like a great solution because then I didn't have to use MetalLB. <laughs> but I love MetalLB. But taking on one less dependency sounded like a good idea, especially when it comes to breaking changes. It's just less to manage. So then, of course, the other option for exposing my services was just to use MetalLB. And, and honestly, after hours and hours of trying to get QVIP service load balancer to be able to work with my services, I decided to fall back on good old trusty MetalLB. And MetalLB just works, and I could use my existing configuration for it. So it really wasn't a loss at all. So at this point, I had my architecture pretty much decided. QVIP for my Kubernetes control plane, and MetalLB for my service load balancer. And once I solved creating multiple server nodes, configuring QVIP, and configuring MetalLB, it was time to do some testing. For my test, I created five nodes, and these are standard Ubuntu cloud image nodes. And I just recently created a video on provisioning new Ubuntu machines using Cloud Image and Cloud Init. They're the perfect Ubuntu minimal server for K3S. You should enjoy the check it out. So once I had these five servers up and running and made note of their IP addresses, it was time to configure my Ansible playbook. So here in the group bars file is where all of my variables are set for Ansible. First, you can specify the K3S version, and then you could specify an Ansible user. And this is the user that Ansible will run as. And another quick tip, if you need to set up Ansible, I got a really quick video on the bare minimum stuff you need to do in order to set up Ansible. It's a great primer for this too. Next is setting a system directory, and you won't really need to touch this. Next is setting a Flannel interface of F0. So Flannel's responsible for networking in K3S, and it's pretty dense, but if you want to know more about it, you should totally check out their GitHub repo. But as I understand it, it's responsible for layer three communication between nodes in a cluster. And so here I set at zero because that's the ethernet interface on these virtual machines. Next, I'm setting a server endpoint. And this is the IP address of the VIP that will get created for Kubernetes control plane. And so this VIP gets created instead of you having to create external load balancers along with KeepAliveD. This creates a VIP that is highly available, that's exposed through the Kubernetes cluster that we can communicate with, and Kubernetes can too. So it's pretty awesome. That takes care of two to three additional virtual machines that you don't have to maintain anymore. Next, I set my K3S token, and this should be a secret that you should obviously keep secret, but it's your password or your token for K3S. And you'll only need this in the beginning or if you join additional nodes later. I then added some additional arguments to my server and to my agents. But as far as the server goes, I disabled the service load balancer. We'll want to do that if we're running MetalLB or a service load balancer, which we are. I'm telling it not to deploy traffic. Now, this is up to you. If you want to deploy traffic, you can just delete that arg. But I'm going to delete it so I can install it with Helm later, because I like to install traffic on my own later with Helm. But if you wanted to install it, you could just delete this argument. This next argument is just setting permissions on kubeconfig. And this is really just for convenience, so I don't have to run sudo when I'm remoted into a node to run kube control. It's probably a good idea not to this, but I got so tired of typing in sudo every time I was testing this, the thousand times I spun this up, that I just changed the permissions of this file but feel free to remove that argument if you want. And the next string of arguments are quite a few, <laughs> but I'll leave these in the documentation. But to summarize the rest of these args, as well as the agent args you see here, is that I found that I needed most of these args to make K3S a little more responsive. What do I mean by that? One of the defaults for K3S is that if a node's not ready, it won't schedule additional pods on it until that node becomes ready. But that timeout is like five minutes long which is a long time. I mean, it's not a long time if you're running multiple replicas of a pod and you're running pods in HA, you would almost not notice at all, especially in larger installations. But in smaller installations like home labs, I found that five minutes is a really long time, especially if you're running a replica of one. That means your service is down for at least five minutes. So I've scraped the internet, found a lot of these arguments, and I've been using these in my home production home lab uh, for about a year now and they seem to work pretty well. But you might need to do some tweaking depending on your services, your hardware, and what works best for you. 
And again, K3S will work without any of those arguments I just mentioned. And maybe you should try it that way first. Next, I set the tag version for kubevib. And this is just the container image tag. The current version is v0.4.2. And so that's what I'm specifying here. And I did similar things for MetaLLB too. So for MetaLLB, there's a speaker container, which the latest version is 0.12.1. And then there's a controller tag as well, which I also set to 0.12.1. Now these should be lockstep in the same version, but I made it configurable in my template just in case they're not so that I didn't have to figure that out in the future. And next I chose an IP range for MetaLLB. So this is the range of IPs that when you expose services, they'll be exposed on and you can communicate with them. I'll show you some examples here in a little bit. But I set a range from 192, 168.30.80 all the way up to 90. So I get 10. So I get 11 IPs here. Typically I only need one or two, but I set the range from 80 to 90 just in case. After that, I checked my host.ini to make sure I had all of the IP addresses in here. And the three virtual machines I am going to use for my masters are 38, 39, and 40. These are also referred to as your server nodes. And then my worker nodes or my agents are gonna be 41 and 42. So this means three servers with Kubernetes control plane and etcd, making it highly available, and then two worker nodes to run my user workloads. And if I had more virtual machines, I would just add them below. So with all of this configured, I ran the site playbook and pointed it at my host.ini. But before I did that, I started pinging my VIP. Obviously it's not there. As soon as it comes up, it should respond. So I ran the playbook. And it installed and configured K3S on one of the server nodes. Shortly after that, the VIP started responding. So this means QVIP is installed on that machine and the VIP is up. And then it started joining other machines to the cluster. And then shortly after that, I had a high availability Kubernetes cluster on K3S. And that's a HA cluster with that CD with a load balancer that's also HA for my control plane and HA load balancers for all of my services. But we need to verify. <laughs> Hopefully you trust me, but let's also verify. So we can SSH into one of our server nodes. Once we're there, we can run sudo kube control get nodes, and we can see we have five nodes and they're all online. You can see I have three control plane etcd masters and two workers or agents ready for workloads. <laughs> super, super awesome. So instead of SSHing into the server, let's actually copy our kube config locally so we can run the rest of the commands. So let's exit out of here. You'll wanna make a directory for your kube config file if you've never done this before, or back up your existing kube config file if it's there. Then we'll just SCP or secure copy that file from one of the servers back to our local machine. After it transfers, we can run a kube control get nodes and see the same thing. Awesome, so now we have kube control running on this machine. Next, I created a super simple Nginx deployment for Kubernetes. This deploys an Alpine version of Nginx and sets the replicas to three. I did that by running kube control apply F and then the path to the deployment manifest. And then Kubernetes told me that deployment was created. Then I wanted to check to see how this deployment was doing. So I ran kube control describe deployment Nginx. And you can see it is deployed and the desired state is three and three were updated, three total, three available and zero unavailable. So all three of my Nginx pods are up and running, but this doesn't give me access to these pods outside of Kubernetes. This is where a service and a load balancer comes in. The exact reason why we installed MetaLLB. So then I created a super simple service file. This service file is just a service pointing to the app of Nginx that we just created, that deployment. And we tell this service to expose it on port 80 and that the target port for that container is also port 80. And here's where the magic takes place. We tell it that the type is type load balancer. This tells Kubernetes to tell our cloud load balancer to give us an IP. And our cloud load balancer right now is MetaLLB. So MetaLLB should hand us an IP address that we specified in that range. And if all of that happens, we should be able to get to our service. So then I ran kube control apply F and then the path to the service file. Kubernetes told me it created the service for me. 
And then I wanted to verify that, so I ran kubectl describe service nginx. And we could see here that it exposed a load balance ingress of one of the IP addresses that we specified in MetaLLB. So this means my Nginx deployment of three pods is now exposed on a load balancer at this IP, 192.168.30.80. And if we go to that IP address, we can see the Hello World page from Nginx. This is so awesome. So this proves all the way through that MetaLLB is working. But we never really tested the HA side of kubevip. We know that we can issue Kubernetes commands right now with kubectl, but we didn't take any of those nodes down. So let's do that too. So I started pinging that vip, and while doing it, I remoted into my first master node, or the server node that's running the control plane. And it's also one of the nodes that's running kubevip that's supplying this vip. So I decided to shut it down. And as you can see on the right, I'm still getting responses. And you can see on the left, I'm not getting a response from that machine. So this means we have an HA VIP now. Now I can't shut down a second node. An HA cluster of only three nodes can only lose one machine. So if I shut down another machine, I won't have access to Kubernetes. But I will still have access to all of my workloads that are running. It's just that I can't change the state of Kubernetes nor access it over kubectl. So this is so awesome. So I started that other node back up and it's responding and obviously kubip is still responding. So what does one do after we build the perfect K3S cluster? We burn it down, of course. There's also a playbook to totally reset K3S back to its initial state. And so running this playbook and pointing at those same host will totally clean it up. It'll clean up all nodes, remove all containers and reset it back to the state it was before we ran this playbook. This was super handy as I was testing on my changes. Must have run this at least a thousand times. And after it's done, we're back to a good state. One note, you might want to actually reboot them afterwards. I've noticed that the VIP stays up and it will respond. So I have a playbook to reboot all of these machines. And this playbook will actually wait for them to respond before it reports a success. Just like that. And so this is everything that everyone struggles with when setting up K3S. No more using MySQL and making that HA if you don't want to. No more spinning up additional load balancers and keep alive D and making those AJ if you don't want to. No more configuring Metal LB or installing with Helm if you don't want to. Just one simple playbook that spins up all of that in one shot and then you can burn it down if you want to too. So again, a huge thanks to the K3S community who made this original playbook along with Jeff Geerling. Thank you so much. And also thank you to GitHub user 212850A. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll have links in the description to all of the code that I have in the description below. And so what do you think of spinning up a truly HA version of K3S using Ansible? Is there anything I should contribute to the script to make it easier for you? Let me know in the comments section below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Fix the lights. I, I, if you weren't here last week, small episode with the lights. I couldn't figure out what was going on with my bottom lights. My bottom lights ended up having a small issue and it took me a long time to figure out. Um, it ended up being a firewall rule. So if it's not DNS, it is a firewall rule. All right, changing the lights as soon as I mention them. <laughs> uh, if it's not DNS, it's a firewall rule. And now, now you're really testing my lights. All right, I, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So.